Tristan, archers! Take the easiest path around the gorge and leave the woods to me. They will be too busy hiding for me to worry about you. King Arthur is a fairly unique title for our Chrome Studios. This is the first time we've actually worked on a licensed movie title. This is a very interesting process. We have to rely a lot on the, the movie assets. We're using all photorealistic images, so we're trying to replicate the movie exactly as it's seen in the cinema. What's been really great is working on this project is taking the script, seeing the dailies as the movie unfolds, and delivering a game now that actually plays like the movie. The level of detail that has gone into this, uh, the making of this game is just uh, beyond me really. It's, uh, it's been a real eye-opener. It's uh, almost as, as detailed as, as making the movie itself. Firstly, we started with a small team that was sent to Ireland where the actual King Arthur movie was being shot. And that included photographers to take uh, reference photos of actors and environments. It was interesting to see when you're walking around over there the number of, number of people that would say, oh, you're working on the game, that's so cool. It'd be really nice to be working on the game instead of working on the movie. And you come back here and the number of guys that say, oh, it'd be really nice to be working on the movie instead of working on the game. The attention to detail has been so meticulous uh, to completely mirror and match what we're doing on the field. It's like the costumes have been handmade for us and the weapons have been handmade for us, basically. The way that people have been scanning faces and then paying attention to the costumes, paying attention to the weapons, paying attention to actually each individual's fighting style, because every character thinks and reacts and fights differently. The intelligence of the characters is all there. They try and react like real people, so you're walking around and you feel like these characters are thinking and, and they're attacking you as if, if they really want to do you damage. In order to render the game characters as accurately as possible, we had the five main characters from the film facial scanned and we also took a lot of motion capture information from both the stuntmen and also the horses for combat in the game. I didn't realise how much work was actually involved. I thought, yeah, here we go along, put a few dots on us, walk about a little bit, do a little fight and go home. But every little detail's picked up, which is great, I think. I mean, if it enhances the game, it's fantastic. Once all that data was collected, our animators and modellers took that information and created characters that followed the film actors as much as possible. From what I've seen on set and so on and, and, and what the guys have been doing, um, it seems like there's a huge amount of attention to um, getting all of the action in the movie, which is obviously a major component of the movie, into the game. And all of that detail, the movement, the horses, the fighting, you know, down to the faces. Once we had that, we expanded upon it even more, making the tougher guys even tougher, the faster guys even faster, until we're really happy with gameplay. Since this is a fighting game, you know, having proper fight mechanics and having the proper feel when you're playing with other characters is, is critical to making a good game. We wanted to make it a, a good experience, fun experience for the player. There's three, three forms of combat in the game. There's uh, melee, sword combat, archery, and also horse. Horses are probably unique to King Arthur, I think, uh, of all combat games that are out there at the moment. It's probably the best rendition of, of horse combat there is. Everything about the horse is, uh, is, is a sort of um, smash and grab, raid and destroy sort of um, vehicle, basically. And uh, one of the nice touches about Dagonet's character is that he believes in a kind of re reincarnation. He, he believes that the horses themselves are the souls of ancient warriors who have come back to carry warriors into battle. Making a horse playable, playable as a weapon, was a really fantastic challenge for me because like any character in game, you have to make it work with what plays right. And we fabricated a few ideas of making the horse a little bit more interactive with the environment, even more so than a real horse would be. Uh, someone in Hollywood once remarked after Final Fantasy came out that uh, so that's the end of us as actors. I mean, all you have to do now is just scan someone. I could write the lines for them, and the gamers could create the drama, and we're out of jobs. It's almost getting to a frightening stage. <laughs> I think actors should start getting really worried. <laughs> and it's going to be great fun playing. It's great fun doing it. This is a new generation, and it looks so real. Um, 
I only hope that you make me survive. <laughs> We've got some fabulous uh, coders here, some fabulous animators and artists, and I think everyone's taken that on board and seen it as a really good challenge. It was great having access to the motion capture and facial scan data, but I think it was the team and their talent that really made the game shine. It was a great honour for us to be approached and offered the King Arthur project. It's also shown what respect we have in the international development community that a property of such high profile would be given to somebody in Australia. It really is a big coup for the studio and we're really proud to be associated with it. A film crew can go out on location and start filming a scene. In the world of games, everything is built quite literally from the ground up. Photographs were taken of the surrounding Irish terrain where the action of the film took place. From there, detailed plans and designs were made and given to 3D modelers to begin the exacting task of laying out the geometry. Because development of the game happened in tandem with the production of the film, communication between film producers and game producers was vital. A steady flow of information between Buena Vista Interactive, Jerry Bruckheimer Films, Konami, and the team at Chrome Studios ensured that up-to-the-minute changes could be made as the film evolved. With combat having a central role in the game, a number of approaches were taken to give the characters convincing styles and techniques. Motion capture data was employed initially as a realistic base for animators to expand on. That data was taken, cleaned up, and pushed to make it work in gameplay. As well as this, hours of video reference was shot to be used as a further aid to animators. Because of the need for speed and interactivity, animators brought to the motion of the combatants a hyper-real quality. Specific signature moves were planned out and then tweened so that they would flow smoothly within the game. Artists and programmers worked together to ensure that the player would have instant feedback while in the thick of battle. I'm a Roman officer. You're safe now. You're safe. Stop what you are doing! What is this madness? They are all pagans here! So are we. They refuse to do the task God has set for them. They must die as an example! You mean they refuse to be your serfs? You! You kept them alive! <laughs> When we get to the wall, you will be punished for this heresy. Perhaps I should kill you now and seal my fate. I was willing to die with them. Yes, to lead them to their rightful place. It is God's wish that these sinners be sacrificed. Only then can their souls be saved. Then I shall grant his wish. Wall them back up. Arthur. I said wall them up! Don't you yeah. see it is the will of God that these sinners be sacrificed? Allow me to find out! These sinners! These sinners! These sinners.
door. We're finished. Can you walk? This way. This way. Hurry. These savages fight like demons. Where is this damn escort? More coming. Go help us! Two arms! Who defiles this temple and God? For centuries, historians believed that the tale of King Arthur and his knights was only a legend. But the myth was based on a real hero. As the boundaries between film and games continue to blur, game cinematics have become increasingly complex. On King Arthur, the challenge for the team at Chrome was to find a way to construct gameplay around the events seen in the movie. A series of blends from original film footage to pre-rendered cutscenes to in-game sinker scenes were used to propel the story. At first, all sequences to be put into cutscenes were carefully storyboarded and checked against the most recent edit of the film. Character models and environments were modified to be used in the pre-rendered scenes. Sinker scenes were then generated by Chrome to create the final blend into the game. Based on the head scans made for the principal actors, a complex rig was devised to animate facial expressions. Careful note was made of the performances by the actors in the film to ensure that the digital actors kept in character. Cloth simulation for capes and robes was used for dramatic effect to add a greater degree of realism. Finally, color grading and 3D camera matching anchor the game's cinematics to transition points in the finished film. The final battle scenes around Hadrian's Wall involved using all the technology developed for the game. Plans and reference pictures of the wall from the film production were used to create the in-game architecture. The team at Chrome Studios expanded on the film by creating new levels for the environment. Additional props like siege engines were also incorporated to fill out the gameplay. An array of different textures were created for the horses involved in the final battle. 
Combining atmospheric effects with large-scale crowd simulations help give the player a sense of epic battle. Background armies or sprites are placed on predetermined pathways. Motion for these sprites are randomized to give the crowd simulation a natural quality. Chrome programmers incorporated ragdoll technology into the game engine. At a certain stage in any character's animation, the game's AI could take over and provide an infinite number of outcomes for the character's motion. The use of advanced AI in Chrome's pipeline will continue to be developed for future games. With King Arthur, Chrome Studios faced new challenges integrating gameplay with film cinematics. A great deal of effort went into meeting these challenges so that the film experience would be enhanced by playing the game. Ultimately, the goal for Chrome is that the player isn't aware of any of this. He or she is too busy hacking away at Wodes. Be on your guard. In King Arthur, our heroes are pitted against some pretty formidable foes. Earlier in the game are the Wodes, named for the type of war paint they wear, as well as mercenaries. Finally, we do battle against the invading Saxons. A vital component in bringing these adversaries to life are the textures. Chrome's texture artists spent a great deal of time experimenting with a number of different approaches for the villains in King Arthur. It requires a great amount of skill and experience to get the most out of the technological limitations inherent in creating an entire world. Textures are placed on a 3D mesh using a coordinate system called UVs. This system effectively allows the artist to paint in three-dimensional space. The addition of props such as siege engines in the final battle scenes greatly enhance the tension and drama. While some designs from the film production were used, additional siege engines were created by Chrome's in-house design department. These were designed to increase the number of gameplay options available to the player while keeping as historically accurate as possible. Once again, Chrome's game engine was called upon to introduce real-world physics into the game. Chunks of ice were pre-split by modelers, then handed over to programmers to complete the final effect. The Marius Estate environment posed specific opportunities and challenges. Originally in the film production, the entire estate was intended to be built on location. It was decided by the makers of the film that only a partial set needed to be constructed, completing the rest with visual effects. In the game, the entire set could be created as it would have appeared using the original plans. An exacting attention to detail meant that all sets and props were constructed using real-world parameters. 
Designs from both the film production as well as Chrome's own in-house design department were used to fill out the architecture and surrounding terrain. Overall color palette and ambient lighting were given careful consideration to help integrate game and film footage. A range of different effects were then introduced to further enhance the environment. Water, fire, and snow were all created with a combination of advanced particle systems and animated texture strips. Real-world physics were built into Chrome's game engine, enabling programmers to introduce a vast array of random events. By creatively blending pre-scripted material with the advanced AI capabilities of Chrome's game engine, the player is immersed in the realism of the game. Take cover! We made it through, didn't we, Arthur? Chrome Studios worked in conjunction with Buena Vista Interactive, Jerry Bruckheimer Films, and Konami Digital Entertainment to bring the film King Arthur to the world of computer games. The highest priority was given to achieving a seamless blend from the film to the game. Chrome developed new proprietary software to plug into its game engine to push the dynamics of the game to greater levels of realism. Head scans were made of the principal actors and integrated into Chrome's character animation pipeline. Detailed plans of the major props and sets from the film were used to accurately reconstruct entire environments in the game. In some cases, the team at Chrome were able to expand on the film and build a lot of architecture not seen in the movie. The film's script is broken down into gameable moments and then a concept document is created to outline the approach to the game. Time of day, points where film and game blend, gameplay and storyline are all taken into account. Particular attention was paid to the other stars of this epic tale. From an early stage, it was decided that the horses in King Arthur would not only act convincingly, but also could be used in combat. Motion capture information was used as a starting point for specialist animators to bring the horses to life. As always in an endeavor such as this, reality is pushed beyond its limits to achieve a more heightened and interactive experience for the person playing the game. By 183 AD, the Roman Empire extended from Arabia to Britain, but they wanted more, more land, more peoples loyal and subservient to Rome but no people so important as the powerful, defeated Sarmatian cavalrymen. In exchange for their lives, these Sarmatian warriors were incorporated into the Roman military. Better they had died that day. For the second part of the bargain they struck indebted not only to themselves, but also their sons, and their sons after, and so on, to serve the empire as knights for 15 years each in Britain. For 200 years this continued, each generation sending sons from their Sarmatian homeland to Britain to fight for the Empire. Each of these Sarmatian knights reported to a Roman commander in Britain, ancestrally named for the first Artorius, or Arthur.